Welcome to the City of Bakersfield Planning Commission meeting. This television broadcast is made available through cooperation with the local cable companies, the County of Kern, and the City of Bakersfield. The Planning Commission meets on the first and third Thursdays of each month. You can watch the rebroadcast of this meeting Saturday at 7 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. The planning meeting agenda is posted on the city's website at www.bakersfieldcity.us. Presiding over today's meeting, Chair Larry Komen. Uh, good afternoon. It's my pleasure to call to order the June 3rd, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. Before we begin, uh, we have two issues, uh, housekeeping issues. Uh, the capacity in this room is uh, in the audience area is limited to 25. So if, uh, if you're here with somebody uh, and can wait in the lobby, we have video in the lobby, you'll be able to observe the whole event. And if you've asked to speak, you'll be allowed time to come in from the outside. So if we can get about 10 people uh, to go to the lobby, that would be great. Uh, the other issue is that the city still requires masks in the city council chambers. Uh, we realize that, you know, the, the expectation is that things are going to change sometime in June, but they haven't yet. And so uh, if you have masks, please wear it. Um, so thank you very much. We don't like it. Yeah, we don't like it either, but <laughs> we're wearing ours. So <laughs> we had this conversation with the city attorney's office before the meeting started, so uh, it's still on. So. Um, okay, so uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll for tonight's meeting? Commissioner Komen? Here. Commissioner Lomas? Here. Commissioner Bajertash? Here. Commissioner Biddle? Here. Commissioner Bowers? Here. Commissioner Cater? Here. Commissioner Wade? Thank you. On March 4, 2020, Governor Newsom declared a state of emergency in California due to the threat of COVID-19. The governor also passed several executive orders related to social distancing, shelter at home practices, and included the suspension of some components of the Brown Act related to public meetings like this one. Uh, as, as such, commissioners have the option to uh, participate by phone. Uh, we have no commissioners participating by phone tonight. Based on, based on guidance from the California Governor's Office, the Department of Public Health, as well as the County Health Officer, the City of Bakersfield has limited this meeting to the general public. As such, only those interested in making a comment during consent and non-consent public hearing items will be allowed to do so. The public may stream a live view of this meeting by going to the website listed on the agenda or by watching it on your local government channel. At this time, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready, pledge. Thank you. Uh, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Public statements. As stated previously, the recent COVID-19 surge and the governor's executive orders have waived certain provisions of the Brown Act requiring physical presence, requiring physical presence. Public comments have been encouraged to be made by email and phone call to the Development Services Department Planning Division. Those received in such a manner have been provided to the commissioners and will be made part of the official record of tonight's meeting. As such, there will, be, there will not be any in-person public statements tonight. Just to clarify, you will have a chance to talk about your specific item that's coming up. These are just general uh, 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 statements that are not related to agenda items. <clears throat> Next item, please. Consent calendar items. Thank you. All matters listed under the consent 
items do not require a public hearing and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of said items unless staff or a commissioner requests specific items be discussed and or removed for separate action. May I have a motion approving the consent items? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to adopt. Is Commissioner Bowers making a motion? May I have a second, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Commissioner Biddle. <clears throat> Madam Clerk, uh, please conduct a, uh, are we still doing a roll call vote or are we doing an electronic one? Let's try electronic. Okay, thank you. So let's have the voting thingy. Oh, here we go. All right. Confirm. Okay. Thank you. Motion approved with Commissioner Wade absent. Thank you. Madam Clerk, next item, please. Consent public hearings. Now is the time for consent public hearing items. If the item is not, if the item is not removed by a commissioner, staff, or a member of the public, the commission will vote on all items in one motion without further comment. If an item is removed, it will be replaced at the end of the non-consent public hearing items. At this time, I will open all of the consent public hearing items Does any member of the public wish to remove a consent public hearing item? Seeing none, uh, this time, does any commissioner or, or staff wish to remove a consent public hearing item? That will be no. At this time, the consent public hearing items not removed are now closed. May I, get a, may I get a motion to adopt staff's recommendation on the consent public hearing items not removed, incorporating all staff memoranda and revised staff recommendations. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to adopt. Commissioner Bowers, make a motion. And have a second, please. A second. And Commissioner Biddle, thank you. <laughs> was that Biddle? I'm sorry. It was like a yeah, that's why I saw the hood going to it. And, okay. it, was, it was down to the wire. Split I apologize. Yeah. That was Commissioner Cater that was the second. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, Madam Clerk, may we please have a vote? For it? Excuse me. Motion approved with Commissioner Wade absent. Thank you. Uh, next item, please. Non-consent public hearings. Thank you. Now is the time for non-consent public hearing items. Before we begin, I want to explain how each hearing will be conducted. Staff will first give a report then those in favor of the project will be allowed to speak. Those in opposition to the project will be able to speak after all those in favor have spoken. Each side will be given five minutes to provide rebuttal comments. Individual speakers may ask questions during their statements, but the questions will not be answered until the public hearing on that item is closed. Written comments may be given to the clerk who will provide copies to the commission. Please be respectful of others participating in the hearing by not repeating the remarks of previous speakers and presenting any new comments or thoughts in a concise and clear way.
Mr. Johnson, would you please provide us with your staff report on, it appears that it's just item 6A. Thank you, Chair Coleman. Good evening, commissioners, members of the audience. Thank you for coming out tonight. Item 6A is a general plan amendment and zone change number 20-0172. The project site is located on the northwest corner of College Avenue and Fairfax Road. The site is currently undeveloped. The applicant is requesting to go from single family, which is R1, to limited multifamily, R2, on approximately six acres. And additionally, go from single family to regional commercial, or C2, on just over three acres. In addition, there's a general plan amendment for consistency with those zoning. The northern part of the parcel that's being proposed is for limited family, multifamily, 64 units, consisting of one, two, and three bedrooms. These are market rate apartments. They will be age restricted, and this is a gated community. The commercial to the south contains approximately 11,000 square feet of commercial use, and this includes a multi-tenant pad, a restaurant with drive-through, an auto fuel station with a convenience market. Although not being considered with your commission on this, uh, part of the overall project does include approximately five acres of single family as a buffer. This will have eight dwelling units on the west side of the project site uh, with approximately 17,000 square foot lots. Looking at more detail of the residential, there are three structures that'll contain 16 units each, identified in red. There are two structures that will contain eight units each, and both of these are two-story. And then to the south, there's a building um, that, if the clicker worked, would show that that is a common building um, and that's going to have a card room, a game room, and an area, there we go, and an area for special functions. The commercial development uh, contains a multi-tenant, four suites, approximately 5,600 square feet. In the middle, there is a restaurant with a drive through 2,500 square feet. And closest to the intersection is the uh, auto fuel station and a convenience store at 3,000 square feet. This was publicly notified in the newspaper mailings and postings on site. Uh, staff did receive comments. Some of those comments were provided to your commission as part of the staff report. Uh, comments that were submitted subsequent to release of that staff report were provided in a memorandum given to your commission earlier today. Some of the main comments were biological concerns, increase in traffic, decrease in property values, homeless, crime, loitering, and concerns with underground storage tanks. So the applicant is requesting, again, to go from R1 to R2. I would note, uh, if it went to R2, they could allow up to 86 dwelling units as proposed, but the, pr the plan that they submitted, uh, they're only looking at uh, 64 dwelling units. Additionally, the applicant is proposing to go from R1 to C2, and that's a regional commercial, and their justification to going to regional commercial is for the drive-through. The drive-through is a permitted use in the C2, while, and I'll discuss in more detail, while in the C1, which is a neighborhood commercial, uh, it requires a conditional use permit. So staff's recommendation in the staff report that was distrib distributed last Friday, uh, we recommended that the R2 include the PUD combining zone, and that PUD is a planned unit development. And what that would allow is what the applicant is showing on the plans is that's how it would look, uh, and it, could be, it would be capped at 64 dwelling units and not allowed to increase. Additionally, staff was recommending that the PCD or planned commercial development combining zone be included with the C2. And again, that would cap the square footage at 11,300. And what you see on the elevations is what would be um, developed on site. A little bit more on the PUD and the PCD combining zones. What this does, it allows for innovative design and diversification of buildings, lot sizes, and open space. 
it also enables the developer to obtain approval of a specific detailed development plan which ensures that the uniqueness of the project design is preserved again it goes back to what i was just saying it locks in the plan that was submitted and what your commission is seeing tonight it locks that plan in unless your commission wants to make changes to that plan which they could do now uh, and it also allows your commission to approve standards and regulations either more or less restrictive than those specified in the municipal code and which are designed to protect and maintain property values and foster and maintain the health, safety, and general welfare of the community. There are three findings. If your commission chooses to add the PCD or PUD combining district, and that is that the development plan is consistent with the general plan and zoning ordinance that it constitutes a sustained desirability and stability and will complement and harmonize with the character of the surrounding neighborhood and community, and that the development plan justifies exceptions from the normal applications of the zoning ordinance by integrating specific elements for the common use of persons occupying or utilizing the property. And I'll touch on that here in a moment when I talk about your options. So your first option you have is to approve the project as requested. And again, that's as requested by the applicant, R1 to R2, R1 to C2. You could approve with the more restrictive zoning. Uh, in this case, for the residential, R2 PUD is more restrictive or exclusive PUD is the most restrictive. The R2 PUD, again, you lock in what you see tonight or any changes that you make tonight and if there's additional changes, it has to come back to your planning commission for approval. If you were to recommend the exclusive PUD zone, uh, if there's any changes, it would come to your commission for a recommendation and then on to city council for approval. For the commercial, the more restrictive are the C2 PCD, which is what staff was recommending with the staff report. Uh, you could also recommend the C1 zone, and that's a neighborhood commercial zone rather than a regional commercial. Within the C1 zone, um, there's, the uses are more restrictive than the C2 zone. The C2 zone uh, allows additional uses, which I'll show on the next slide. But if you go to just C1, it, uses that are permitted are ministerially reviewed, so it would not come back to your planning commission for consideration. Uh, if you went with the C1 PCD zone, again, any use then would have to come to your commission for approval or if you went the exclusive PCD zone, then any use would come to your commission for a recommendation and then on to city council for approval. So the difference between the C1 and the C2 zone, the C1 zone allows all uses which are in the professional administrative office zone. So you can have medical offices if you would like, you could have real estate offices, uh, any of that professional type use. The C1 zone also allows auto fuel stations, uh, cosmetic stores, convenience stores, dry cleaning, hair styling, liquor store, and restaurant with no alcohol or drive through. Those items are only permitted in the C1 zone with a conditional use permit. The C2 zone allows all the uses in the CO zone uh, and the C1 zone, but again, it allows more flexibility, an increase in the number of uses, which could include an adult entertainment store, apparel store, auto dealership, car detailing, gift store, microbrewery, or a restaurant with alcohol or drive through Going back to the options, if you were to choose C1 PCD as an option for tonight, with the PCD zone, you could approve the plan with a drive through So the applicant would not have to come back and ask for a conditional use permit for the drive through That is something that you would be approving tonight if you went with the C1 PCD, if your commission so chose. Or your commission may say, we don't want a drive through and you could uh, prohibit a drive through And again, staff's recommendation at the time was C2 PCD, but we have received a lot of comments. So your commission may feel that that is no longer applicable uh, and in, Denying the project may be the appropriate course. Uh, in denying the project, since there are several uh, requests being made, you can deny the project in its entirety or a portion thereof. In other words, you could deny the multifamily, approve the commercial, you could deny the commercial or approve the multifamily. 
The last two options for your commission are if there are something simple that needs to be answered and we can't provide that tonight, you can continue for two weeks. Uh, anything that would take longer than that, the project would have to be referred back to staff because this is on what we call a general plan amendment cycle. Uh, and we have to have everything to planning commission, or excuse me, city council. We're looking at uh, July 14th. So any continuance beyond June 17th would be a refer back. And this completes staff's presentation and are available if there's any questions. Thank you, Mr. Johnson, appreciate it. <clears throat> the public hearing on this item is open. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in favor of the project? If so, please step to the microphone, identify yourself and proceed. Because of the mask, if you would please spell your name when you come up so that the clerk can get it correctly, that'd be great. Uh, good evening, honorable com uh, commissioners and staff. Uh, you, did you say remove the mask or you can remove it okay, okay. Uh, my you can name remove it while you're speaking if you spell your name for the clerk that'd be great uh, my name is matt vovella uh, i'm the engineer for the project and the applicant uh, my name is spelled m-a-t-t -T. Uh, the last name is v as in victor o v as in victor i l l a and uh, did you get all that okay uh, I'm here to speak on behalf of the project. I also, uh, with me tonight are the owners, which are seated directly behind me, uh, Mr. Shinda Uppel and Mr. Simran Diol. Uh, the project architect is also with us tonight, Michael Danins. Um, um, uh, before I start, I'd like to thank city staff uh, for all the thorough work they, they've done on the project. And, and uh, you know, they've certainly, uh, um, required us to cross every T and dot every I. Um, so we are grateful for that. Um, I'd just like to make a few points uh, about the project. Um, you know, this has been a long time coming to bring this before you tonight. Um, we had worked on this project about a year, and then the owners realized that some additional land was needed uh, for the local water company, East Niles. So they worked with them and they provided that land for them, but the end result was that it delayed the project. Uh, we had to go back, the architect and myself, and redesign the project. <clears throat> that took, you know, delayed the project likely a year. Um, but I also want to point out that part of the reason for the uh, request for the GPA and the zone change is that at the startup of this project, we looked at numerous um, uh, lot layouts for just complete residential development. Um, you know, as part of the due diligence work, we did lot layouts and cost estimates. And I'm sure you're aware of the uh, topography out there, but it's very challenging. And, you know, the initial costs for all the infrastructure were roughly three to four times the, the norm uh, for single family home development. So it was just cost prohibitive. It didn't pencil out. Uh, I do think. Uh, the project, my opinion, in its current state is somewhat of an eyesore in, in a very nice uh, area, um, but I, I doubt it would ever develop as residential property. I think there would have to be some uh, a zone change or a general plan amendment for that project to develop. And again, that's based on, on our due diligence investigations for numerous residential layouts. Um, I did receive one call from a gentleman that lives uh, to the west of the project, and uh, his concern was impact on views. Um, and I'd also got wind through staff that there was a concern from the people to the north of the project that uh, the proposed two-story apartments could conceivably look in their backyards. Um, as part of the project requirements, um, uh, the city engineering department required us to do a preliminary grading plan. With that, we also did a view shed analysis. Now, uh, which is basically a cross section running east west and a cross section running north south, and that verifies what impact there could be to a view shed. Um, views to the east, yes, those folks' view to Fairfax uh, Road could be impacted a little bit, but all the views to the countryside to the east and the mountains are not impacted at all. 
And you know, we've shown this with the submittal of a preliminary grading plan on this project. Uh, to the north, uh, there was concern that the second story could be looking in someone's backyard. Uh, I understand these concerns, uh, but again, we did a very thorough topographical survey, including the tops of the uh, retaining wall and the, <clears throat> the edges of the adjacent property. But that second story looks directly into the retaining wall to the north. So, and uh, we can demonstrate, I think we have demonstrated that with our uh, preliminary grading plan. Um, I'm gonna yield the floor uh, in, a, in a minute to uh, the project architect to talk about the various components of the project, but I did wanna to touch on <clears throat> California Senate bills 32 and 746. Um, as I'm sure you all know, the purpose of both of these bills was reduction of greenhouse gases. And um, one way to do that is reduction in vehicle miles traveled. Decreasing vehicle miles traveled is, is uh, achieved by infill development and denser development. And I believe the, this project uh, checks all those boxes. Uh, just on a final note, uh, uh, Mr. Johnson mentioned that there is a portion of the project owned by the owners that is not a part of the general plan amendment and zone change. Uh, again, we've done <clears throat> lotting layouts and, and uh, preliminary grading plans for that. Uh, those will be single family homes, but a number of those lots are being retained by the owners for their own personal res residence. Uh, the point I'm making is that they're not a developer that just comes in, makes a profit, and departs Bakersfield. Uh, they have a vested interest in this project and the community. Uh, I want to make myself available for any questions that you all might have, but at this time I'd like to yield the floor to uh, the project architect, Michael Danens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you. Mr. Dan. Good evening, Chairman Lohman, uh, Coleman, members of the Planning Commission. My name is Michael Danens. Uh, the last name is spelled D-H-A-N-E-N-S as in Sam. As um, Mr. Favilla stated, I was the, the project architect that designed the uh, project. And when the, uh, the owners brought the project to me initially, there were several challenges, as you can imagine, given the topography and the unusual nature of the configuration. So it made sense um, in, if the single family lot layout was uh, pro cost prohibitive to kind of do something a little bit in between. And so despite the high cost of that, we were able to retain some of the property to the east and north of the water tank farm from the community, East Niles Community Water District um, as single family homes. And those are the, the eight lots that uh, Mr. Johnson indicated in his staff report, some of which the owners are, uh, are going to retain for themselves to build their personal residences on. The rest of it, um, to provide a good infill project, we kind of separated some of it to high density residential or high medium density residential and some to commercial. Uh, the project is, kind of, we kind of try to keep away from the property line, so we provided additional setbacks to the north and to the west to allow for additional landscaping. We tried to minimize the footprint of the commercial by only putting out like 11,000 square feet on it. And that commercial is kind of squeezed into the part of the site that's only about 160 feet wide. So it, it didn't make a lot of sense to use that part of the property for other uses. So it kind of made sense to do a small little a commercial element there. The rest of the, the two-story apartment complex project, uh, like Mr. Johnson indicated, is far below the density that would no otherwise be allowed by the request. Again, we tried to provide a lot of landscaping and separation between the buildings and setbacks from the street, as well as provide an ample common amenity uh, use at the southern end of that that could be utilized for the residents of the project. Um, the owners had also indicated to me that they've been talking to some people with respect to the commercial part, the multi-tenant building, uh, and they've had some interest by some people who provide medical services, doctor's offices, and a pharmacy. 
So there's some possible uses already identified for that, for that building. Nothing locked in stone yet, but that's kind of the direction that they're going. So we're trying to, again, provide a lot of different uses that we think would be beneficial to the surrounding neighborhood and to the community. Uh, likewise, we'd be able to entertain any questions that you might have during your comment portion later on. Again, Michael Danans and the architect for the project. Thank you. Thank you. Respected commissioners, staff, and uh, the neighbors, good evening, everybody. My name is uh, Simran Deol, spelled as uh, SSM, I, in, I India, and mom, R Romeo, A Apple, and Nancy. Last name spelled as uh, D David, E Echo, or Oscar L Louisiana. Uh, I would like to uh, let you guys know that we, we are invested a lot uh, to develop this property that is an eyesore for a long time. Uh, we are committed to deliver a high quality product uh, for the neighborhood and uh, we are committed to build our own homes on the property as well. And in fact, uh, one, uh, one of my, uh, my partner's uh, son is a doctor and he will have his clinic uh, uh, too on the property. Uh, so we have a vested interest in uh, the success of this uh, project and make sure that this project is built to the standards of the neighborhood. And we want uh, to be part of this neighborhood. Uh, thank you. Good evening, staff and uh, commissioners. Um, thank you for um, you know hearing us out today. My name is Charnpreet Uppel. That's C H A R N P R E E T. Last name is Uppel. U P P L E. Um, me and my brother, uh, my father. You know, we were we were born and raised. Um, in this area, predominantly on college, and uh, live actually behind um, this property currently. Um, I completed my um, internal medicine residency at Kern Medical Center, um, and I just graduated earlier in January. Um, so primarily for the medical offices and the pharmacy, um, that I just, you know, I was born and raised um, in Bakersfield. I wanna be part of this community and be part of the area. Um, I always felt that you know that that corner was always just stuck out like a sore thumb with nothing really developing there um and like mr volvoff said earlier that uh um we are not some developers that are trying to you know invest in um and trying to just to move away we want to be we want to live on this property and uh be a part of it and uh i think um, from us being from the area, um, um, especially that neighborhood and growing up in that neighborhood, um, I think we um, can relate to all the best uh, visions that we will have for this uh, property. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the project? If so, please come to the microphone and state your name and proceed. Okay. All right. Is there anyone who wishes to speak in opposition to the project? Can I see a show of hands? How many people want to talk? Okay. We'll be here as long as it takes to everybody to get, get their time. So um, we just try to be expedient when you, you know, get closer or whatever so you can... Uh, move through quickly. Um, if you would like to speak in opposition to the project, please step forward to the microphone, uh, state your name, please spell it for the clerk, and then proceed. Good evening, staff and commissioner. My name is Shane Brandon, S-H-A-N-E. B-R-A-N-D-O-N. I live just north to this property in the summit, and I'm the um, current HOA president. Um, I have a few concerns in regards to this, this development. Number one, um, traffic is 
already an issue coming down Fairfax from 178 towards College is a racetrack. So you're going to be adding three entrances off of Fairfax um, with no, no traffic lights. There's no center divider. It's just a double yellow line. There's already been accidents there in that area right there where the, across the street from the church. Um, so th that is a big concern um, that I have. One of the other concerns that I have is the grading plan that butts up to um, the summit development. There, there is an easement, looks like there is an easement there. I can't tell exactly um, how wide that easement is, but the grading plan does show that it, the property will drop off lower and have a sloped tiered uh, stackable wall like, I don't know if it's similar to what we have, but we already have a, a stackable block retaining wall there. But one of my concerns is by taking away that footing that's, our, that's there now, what does that do to the property up above um, engineering wise uh, to cause any settlement in their backyards or on their houses? Um, that, that's a big concern on those south, south properties there. Um, I, I, I feel like it's gonna bring, you know, unwanted mm -hmm. issues. You know, we have already within a, a mile up to a mile and a half in each direction, north and south, we already have gas stations um, that have ha already have had issues in the past with uh, fights and shootings. Um, I think bringing in another one will just add to the issue. Uh, let's see here. But the, the, the south wall issue, so like I said, my concern there on that south wall is, is there, on the engineering side of it, is, is there any piles that's gonna be put in to help support that um, load? Um, I, I couldn't see any of that based on the, on the plans that I've seen. Uh, like I said, the traffic concerns, and then what barriers will be placed to keep people from being able to gain access to the wall that's currently there um, and keep people from climbing on that wall because the way that wall is designed, you can stick your feet in the holes and easily climb the wall. That's all I have, thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Brand. Next speaker, please. Hi, um, my name is Sylvia Granillo, and I also live in the summit. Um, Can you I'm, please spell your name oh, for the clerk, please? It's S Y L V I A, last name Granillo, G R A N I L L O. Um, I'm not opposed to having custom housing there. Um, my concerns are of um, mini mar uh, market type of um, property. Um, like, I'm not gonna touch on a lot because Mr. Brandon touched on a lot of what I had to say, but um, one of my biggest concerns, um, we walk through um, Fairfax, or college in Fairfax quite a bit, and it's very dangerous there if you're gonna add three entrances um, going into Fairfax. It's one thing if they're coming in college, but Fairfax, I, I do have some concerns. Um, I think that if you do approve it, the medium needs to come all the way to college so that people can't come out and are darting out. Um, it kind of curves, if you, I don't know if you can see. And where that curve is, a lot of people um, don't anticipate the curve. And oftentimes, because the road is a little bit big there, there's a lot of missed uh, wrecks right there because there is a little bit of, of maneuver room. But going forward with that additional traffic, I think that's something that the city needs to consider with three um, exits. Um, coming out, and um, 
I would also want to know the, um, you had mentioned the, um, the, I guess, apartments or multi um, uh, apartments that are going to go there. What, is there, is that like a 55 and up or what kind of, what, what is proposed? I mean, is there like an age limit? Um, I'm assuming it's not Section 8 by seeing the plans. But you know, staff know can't answer any questions at this time, but uh, okay. we'll get back to those. Okay. Because if it is like a Section 8 housing or something like that, I am a little bit concerned because, um, I mean, just south of, of um, college, well, the, you know, you start getting lower income. Not that I have anything against, you know, it just brings a different kind of um, community. And um, we're already at the end of it. So I would really, if it's going to be approved, then I would prefer something like an um, 55 and older or something of that nature. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, commissioners and Paul Johnson. My name is Kurt Wingate, K-U-R-T. Last name is Wingate, W-I-N-G-A-T-E. My wife and our family have been uh, residents on Country Club Drive since 1985. And we have seen a lot of changes in East Bakersfield. We have seen a lot of promises we were actively involved when East Hills Mall was being developed, and we went to the meetings, we asked the questions, the developers promised everything that we wouldn't be able to see, the nine acre sumps that are at Oswell and 178. The landscaping would be beautiful, maintenance would be awesome. We are, are not anti-development. We are pro-development people. But we've seen East Hills Mall collapse. We had the Hillcrest Shopping Center on Nile Street. We actually had Supervisor Barbara Patrick come to our house and talk to us about the beautification of Hillcrest Shopping Center. She sat in our living room. We listened. We were excited. Look at Hillcrest Shopping Center now. Look at any property on Niles, and specifically, I'm talking about Mount Vernon to Fairfax. It is blighted. There is no shortage of available um, square footage for whatever type of shop you want to be putting in. Um, the last thing we need in this section are more gas stations. You go to Fairfax and Niles, and you have a fast strip, and one other um, convenience store serving uh, convenience items and fueling. You go north, maybe a mile, mile and a half, you get to Auburn and uh, Fairfax. You have another fast strip with fueling station. You have a car wash on the northeast corner there with uh, fueling station. So we got four fueling stations within a mile of this project. We don't need more fueling stations at all. My thoughts are that I am against this project. I am very pro-development. I would love to see single-family residences go in. I would love to see the city of Bakersfield get involved. At least please give us some curb, gutter, and sidewalk so that people that are walking for exercise can not have to walk on Fairfax. We have a bike route running through this area that is very dangerous for the cycling community. We've had deaths on this. Norm Hoffman died on Fairfax Avenue years ago. Dangerous. Ingress and egress has been spoken about. But if you don't travel this road, if you aren't heading southbound on it, and you think you're going to slow down and turn into an apartment complex with 64 units, uh, you better watch your tail end because that is a freeway coming through there. There's no way to put a stoplight in there that I can see, but something would have to be done with that. Our request is that this zoning stay R1, 
let's find some development dollars, and I know they're short, but let's get some custom homes that will benefit the Bakersfield Country Club area. Right now, this area is not in need of this development. We're in need of more quality homes, quality families, because we know that as projects get built, ownership changes. Eventually, the owners change. They move, they pass away, they get an offer they can't refuse, and the project gets sold. And then here we go, East Hills Mall all over again. So let's please keep this R1, let's get some curb gutter and sidewalk in there, and let's beautify Northeast Bakersfield, Bakersfield Country Club, and make our schools be more successful than they will be if we get some high occupancy 64 unit apartments. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Sorry, I'm stuck. Uh, good evening, commissioners and uh, staff. My name is Gail Malouf, G A I L. M-A-L-O-U-F. The property that I um, live in is, backs up to this development. Our backyard would be in this development. And my husband and his late wife built the house and they, they bought that property in the early 80s and built the house. And when they built that house, they looked at that develop, you know, to see what was going to be going on behind their property. And they saw, saw that it was zoned R1. So they went ahead and bought that property and built a home on Ridgetop Terrace. And people purchasing property, I am in the real estate business and have been for 44 years. I am pro-development, obviously. I am, I was born and raised in Bakersfield, so I am very concerned about Bakersfield and what happens here. I'm an east sider, grew up on the east side as well. So when people purchase property and they look at it and they know what's their neighboring property going to be like, they look at that. And if it's zoned R1 and they expect homes to be built behind them, then they say, okay, that's great. If, they had, if it had been zoned R2, commercial, but people aren't usually going to purchase that. So the people that bought and built and expected R1 to be behind their homes or in that general area is why they bought there. The R1 zone, the developer, when they bought it, knew it was zoned R1. I did hear what the um, engineer said and how it would be prohibitive. I've lived in the, on the east side all my life. We back up to it. We know what the terrain is, and anybody purchasing that property would have known what the terrain is and know that it is not going to be an easy development. So, and if you go to the east on college where it ends, according to the maps that were provided to us by staff, and by the way, we did receive a letter. There were 140 letters sent out to the people that were 300 feet from the property. From, from this project. The way that most people found out about it is because we let other people know. The signs aren't, don't work, you know, they are, that is a busy street. It says zone change or proposed zone change from R1 to R2, R1 to C2. Most people don't even know what that means. Okay, so we had to get out there and let people know about this. So. If you go down, per, according to the map, if you go east on College, there are acres of property already zoned R2 that can be developed. Don't know who owns it. Don't know if the gentleman that purchased this property looked at that. But there's plenty of R2 that is already available. If you go, to, and this has already been discussed, but if you go up to Auburn, there are three corners with gas stations, convenience centers, and strip malls. If you go south of this, you go to Niles, and there's a convenience center, a gas station, and strip malls. And both of those areas are, per, are commercial areas. 
our area here at the, this area is residential to the south, residential to the west, and residential to the north. This is a residential area. Putting a commercial property on that corner would be astronomical problems. If you, if you go from the summit north, I have to get my street, Fairfax is wider, okay? You have the two lanes, you have a divider in between all the way up, and then you, it's wider. You could even park on that street. You can safely go into the summit. From the summit down, it goes into a four-lane road, no divider, no sides to it. If you put an entrance, they, they were saying three entrances. I saw four because it was so much showing one into the commercial or one into the uh, R2 and then two into the commercial and then they're showing a public or a pri excuse me, private road going in. There is no way that you could make an entrance in there safely. And because it's only a, t uh, uh, there's a two lane or two yellow lines there. If you were coming out from the commercial, if you were coming out from the R2 to Fairfax, the only way you could go safely would be south. Do you think those people are actually going to go south, turn around, go north? If they want to go north, they're going to cut across that two-lane road, they're going to cut across that double yellow line, and we're going to have a lot, of, lot more accidents than we have today. I am in favor of keeping it R1, make the whole community from the summit down to college R1, have it gated, have, have uh, homes in there. If you've got the space for the commercial, you've got the space for an, some more houses. So make, make it a nice development. We do need to have better looking properties on the east side. We have quite a few blights, and I feel that by putting in this commercial with a gas station, with a convenience center, and with a drive-through restaurant, you're going to bring in the same kind of people that frequent these other areas that panhandle, that loiter, that go through the trash, and that have trash every place. It brings in the wrong environment for this. You have residential all around you. This area already has a lot of problems with theft. We just had nine properties that were set on fire by an arsonist. I have, even on our street, we have people that come up, they go through our trash cans. I, got, I saw one one day, and, and she was, you know, just going through the trash can, and I said, please leave this area. You don't belong here. And she just looked at me. And I said, I'm going to call the police. And she just looked at me because she knew nothing could happen to her. She emptied all the trash out, and then she went on her merry little way because she picked out the things that she wanted. If we have this, if we have a commercial area on that corner, it's going to draw in more people like that. There's an encampment right down the end of college in the hills, a huge encampment of homeless people. And they come in and they go through our trash and, they, and there was a property on Country Club. People were in their house and they heard the dog was barking at, at, in, at, at their bathroom door. They, there was a homeless person in there. And they were home. So they're, they're around that area. It's a great area for them. And putting commercial on that area and in that place will just bring more of that. So I believe that we should keep it R1, which is a general plan, which when people bought those homes and built there, that's what they were told it was going to be. And the traffic situation on college, they just now widened that road after... 40 years of asking them to do it because from Fairfax going west on college up until Flint Ridge, it was a very narrow street. The water district did 
give that area a portion of their property to the city so that they could widen that street. They did widen it, it's better, but it's still a two lane road. And to get in and out of there is going to be pro a problem with traffic and it's going to hurt people and there's gonna be a lot of traffic uh, accidents. And, uh, and when one of the gentlemen talked about, yes, there, you know, there, there's people do walk there, but there are no sidewalks. There, there's nothing for them to walk on, they're walking on dirt. So um, I'm, I'm in favor of development, but please, let's just leave it R1 for the general plan and for the good of the neighborhood. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. My name is Gay Bunting, G-A-Y-E-B-U-N-T-I-N-G. I'm against this proposal for the same reasons that the previous speakers have outlined. Unless you're living in that neighborhood, you don't realize how fast the traffic goes down Fairfax Avenue. People fly down that. I don't even know that there's really a speed limit. Coming southbound from, let's see, from Auburn and even actually from Panorama down to college, I, I don't know that there's a speed limit sign on the west side. People go as fast as they want to go. For somebody in front of you, if you're doing 55 miles an hour, which is not uncommon, somebody stops or slows down to turn in, it's going to make a huge problem. There's going to be a lot more accidents. The other point is that project, as it's designed, is not needed in that neighborhood. As previously mentioned, the, a mile south, there are gas stations and a, a pharmacy. About a mile or so north, there's a pharmacy, dental offices, and other uh, fast foods and, and, and convenience stores. Everything that that project has, we have almost within walking distance. It's really not needed. There's absolutely no way that whatever promises that have been made about beautification and security and anything else, there's no way that that can be enforced. The property values are going to plummet in that area. And not only that, more importantly, the safety in that area. My next door, I live right behind the water tanks in that cul-de-sac, right behind the water tanks. And last week, my neighbor's house was vandalized by arsonists. And there are several other homes in our area that had the same problem. Throughout that whole country club area, there's been, for whatever reason, uh, a, a series of arson um, crimes going on in that area. Bringing in a, a convenience store and a fast food store, we all know that's not going to raise property values. I, I doubt that anybody that's here would want a convenience store around the corner from their house if they had a say in it. I request that you seriously consider this and the many people impacted by this. And it's not just in our 300 feet from Fairfax and College Avenue. It's not just 300 feet. It's going to take in a whole section of the east side of Bakersfield. Thank you. Next speaker, please. 
Hello, good evening, everyone. My name is Raul, R-A-U-L Zuniga, Z-U-N-I-G-A. I just want to let it be known that I am opposed of putting any more gas station stores, convenience stores uh, in that area. If you look on the picture, uh, those sumps area and the water tank area, I feel when you put a convenience store in those areas where you have these kind of like off to the side areas, there's gonna be a lot of homeless people coming in to you know, try to live there. All of us have been down by the Walmart, um, the Home Depot, the sumps down there, completely filled with garbage, completely filled with homeless people. And I believe that they, they, they kind of follow around these, if you go to any kind of uh, convenience, store, convenience store, even up to the, to the uh, Auburn and Fairfax area, you'll, you'll see like anywhere that they can hide out, set up a camp, set up some shelters, you know, um, that's what they're gonna do. So that sump area, I can like already see that in my mind, like man, if there's a gas station there, convenience store, there's gonna be homeless people there because you know, they'll walk across the street, start asking for money. Same thing with the water tanks. Uh, those water tanks provide uh, fresh, clean water to the residents in there. Can you imagine the police being called every single day for homeless people setting up an encampment there? Um, you know, that's a, also a security issue. You know, you can't have unauthorized people in those areas. But I just want this board to really take that into consideration when they're looking at this project that, you know, it's gonna bring a lot of homelessness to that area. The homeless people are gonna, you know, find a way to, to make a living to, or, you know, to, to maybe build, manufacture something around that area. And it's gonna bring those property values um, down in that entire area. And I live just to the north of that area. So um, hopefully you guys can uh, take all of our remarks into consideration when you're uh, doing your final tallies. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, everybody. Bill Stevenson, B I L L S T E V E N S O N. My wife, who is over here, Laura, and I built our home in the summit 23 years ago. Raised two boys there, great community, great neighbors. Some of those neighbors are here tonight. What I want the commission to know is, is that we have faced some real challenges as far as safety. The home right across the street from me, which backs up to the wall, the south end, has been broken in on two separate occasions with two different owners. I've had the displeasure of having to go over there and help clean up those situations. Mr. Brandon Shane, you heard from, he was a victim of theft. I had a forerunner stolen out of my garage years ago. The wall, the infamous wall has been tagged numerous times. We've had to repaint over it. We've already, we've had to add cameras to our gates so we can keep track of who comes in and out of our property. We're very concerned with safety. It's unsafe now for a lot of us. We've all got cameras. I just put in security lights. To make sure my gate's always locked. There's people driving through our neighborhood. Even though we're gated, you think you're safe, we're not. I admire what these owners want to do. I admire the architect's work. Great design, great project, just not the right place. It is an ISO. For 23 years, I've driven by it. I'm a bicyclist. I've ridden out onto Fairfax Road, and I know what it's like to dodge the cars. So please take into consideration not only the, the impact of property values, but more importantly, the safety that we're, challenged with, that we're challenged with now. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, my name is Brian Sorcy. It's B-R-I-A-N, S is in Sam, O-R-C-I. I uh, rise in opposition to this project. Uh, my family and I live in close proximity to this location, and we would uh, ask the commission respectfully to recommend against the zone change in its entirety. Uh, we do not need this type of additional development in this area. There's already scores of vacancies and abandonments 
a stone's throw away. Uh, you've heard numerous um, people speaking of uh, the similar type of convenience stores and gas stations, all within uh, a very, very close proximity. This will only, this will only result in the potential for more crime in the area that we already s struggle to protect. I think that one of the only things that's gonna help us in this area comes with the pride of ownership. And pride of ownership in this area could come with the development of single family residences as this is zoned. I think this project pushes us the other way. You know, 64 apartments, a uh, convenience store, fast food uh, restaurant of some sort um, would drastically add to an already very busy and very dangerous intersection. I heard a comment earlier uh, of, that I was <laughs> frankly baffled by that somehow this development makes this area greener and helps with greenhouse gases, or I forget exactly how um, that comment was stated, but bringing untold hundreds of vehicles to this area hundreds of vehicles in this area on a daily basis uh, cannot help that cause um, whatsoever. So I'm, on behalf of myself, uh, you know, my family and my neighbors, we again ask that you uh, recommend against this rezoning and, and that perhaps you take the additional step to encourage the area to be developed as currently zoned. And, uh, you know, maybe there's some ways that the city can uh, actually support um, in this effort. You know, after all, this is the way that this property was purchased. You know, this, this was purchased as R1 property. You know, you don't uh, have to be a, a, a civil engineer or anything else to look at the layout of this land and think it's going to be a challenge to develop. I, I would presume that the purchasers of the property would have taken that into consideration. You know, unless the motive was let's just buy it as our R1 and then and then purposefully move forward with trying to change it. But again, I'd, um, I, you know, I don't want to see this area turn into another uh, tent city location. It's, um, you know, and again, the, the best way to prevent that would be develop it, to develop it as uh, perhaps a nice gated community with uh, R1 zoned houses as currently zoned. Thank you. Next speaker, please. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. <clears throat> Jesse Martinez, M A R T I N E Z. So I've been living in this neighborhood just uh, west of this area here for about 11 years. And when I see how the years have passed, I've seen some traffic increase. And, you know, I don't like it. Uh, with this added portion here of development, it's just going to bring that additional uh, amount of traffic, which that comes the people that have lost their ways, you know, also a convenience store and all this added apartments and so forth. We have that all throughout the areas on Niles and further down. I just don't see it happening as a good idea. Um, a convenience store, we can drive either side and be there. Uh, gas stations, the same thing. Um, I personally, you know, see it as a, a better fit for something better developed there, something that maybe will uh, beautify the area. All these apartments and convenience stores and so forth, just, like I said, they're just down the street. I don't have an issue walking a little further, driving a little further to get to those locations. Um, I'd rather see an eyesore of this dirt than having crime maybe add, add it to the area, or just, like I said, anything that's gonna lower the, the value of the locations. 
Uh, just think it's better suited for something else. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hello, I'm Kim Etchison, and I wasn't planning on speaking tonight, but I'm here to support my neighbors. Can you spell your last name for it's the clerk, please? E T C H I S O N. Um, my husband and I bought our house. 17 years ago, and we're right at that middle line of behind the water towers. My backyard is in that backyard. Um, I agree with everything that my previous uh, neighbors stated. I'm against the zone change, but also I am for keeping this in the zone. It was why we bought our house as a residential neighborhood. Um, also, I don't want to see a strip club in my backyard, nor 64 apartments. Um, I wanted to question that C2, that would include a strip, it could have a strip club. Uh, could there be a marijuana shop? My I have a question about that. Also, what is the age restricted um, on that residential change? Um, I was questioning that. And also, I totally agree with the homelessness at the gas stations. I sometimes, I have teenage kids. I have to know when they go down to the corner gas station because it is very dangerous. Uh, there's drug addicts acting, asking you for money as soon as you get out of your car to the north and the south. Um, also, has there been any environmental study done on the property in regards to, say, the kit fox, the kangaroo rats, the red fox? I know I have all those animals in my backyard. Literally, I have had a kangaroo rat in my house. It bit me on my hand <laughs> as I pulled it out of my cat's mouth. So I just... Um, have those questions in regard to the strip club and I was also confused with the decrease in greenhouse gases I don't see having 64 new dwellings with the traffic I don't see how that um, I would be very happy to keep it at the at the R1 zoning thank you next speaker please All right, at this time, does any commissioner have any questions for the staff or public on this item? Remember, this is not time to express any opinions on the matter. It's only time to ask questions. Commissioner Cater. I just had a question for staff uh, re regarding traffic study and the number of ingress and egresses at the corner of college and Fairfax. Just how, could, just talk me through the, um, A, just clarify the designation and classification of college and Fairfax. I think we've been using the word, I think the word arterial has been used for Fairfax. Can you confirm the classification of college? First and foremost. Good evening. Hi. That is correct. Uh, Fairfax is an arterial and the uh, college is a collector street. Collector, okay, thank you. And um, I know we've come, many proposals have come before us that talk about ingress and egress as they approach intersections of collectors to arterials. Can I just, can I ask, do the the distance from these intersections meet city standard as far as traffic engineering? Yes, they've uh, revised the plans and now they do meet. We're a minimum 200 feet away from the intersection. Okay, so the plan we're looking at was is the revised plan that. Okay. Correct. Thank you. 
Any other commissioners have any questions for the staff or the public? All right. Commissioner Bowers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. To staff, I had a question with respect to, so if we approve this today, say, so the C2 zoning, which under the C2 zoning, to her point, a strip club could, typically, could, could go in a C2 zoning. Uh, but if we approved it, was it my understanding that we could approve it under a C1 uh, with a PCD overlay? And That is a more restrictive use, so yes, you could. Thank you. That's my question. Uh, Commissioner Lomas. All right, I got, I got several questions. I'm gonna direct them all at staff, and staff, you've kicked me over to the applicant if, if needed. Um, one is, I, I, I don't remember seeing what the criteria was for the age restriction. That would be for the applicant to answer, and if you added the PUD overlay to that, that would be a condition that would be applicable to that to add. It would be self-imposed. Uh, so the applicant, would you mind answering my question? Matt Fovilla, um, could, could you spell it again? Um, we proposed an age restriction of 50. Say that again, I'm sorry. 50, five, zero. Five, zero. Uh, don't leave because I've got a couple more. Uh, and that is all residents within it or only one person has to um, be 50? My understanding that would Julian, be. Julian, a little closer to that microphone because yeah. sure. people in the back are trouble hearing us. Uh, my understanding would be one resident within the family would have to be 50. Okay. Um, next question, did you, did you reach out and conduct any neighborhood meetings before this, uh, this evening? Uh, no, I had a call from a gentleman which I responded to. Thank you. Um, hang on. Mr. Danins might be able to answer this, but I'll ask you the question. Sure. If this was to be developed as R1, how many units could you fit on this property? Uh, I don't. I don't recall the answer to that. I'm. Mr. Danins, you know, it, do you know? Thank you. Um, I would like to, if staff could put up the site plan. Close enough. Oh. No, I'll go back to the other one. I want to see the whole thing. The, yeah, okay, that's why I'm going to the whole thing. One okay, moment. sorry. Thought I saw the whole thing. There we go. Um, you, I, I believe I heard in the presentation that it's gated. So that's just the apartment site, correct? Uh, that's correct. And where is your main entrance? Uh, that would be roughly um, where that line is. Separating the project, separating the, the two separating zones. Separating the two projects. Mm -hmm. So what does that look like up on Fairfax? Do we, have, do we have a rendering of that? I'm sorry, can you repeat that question? You've got another entrance on Fairfax. I'm wondering why that's there. If your main entrance is there and that's an actual entrance, not an emergency access. Uh, well, you, you need two entrances to provide emergency access vehicles. Uh, we're not permitted to have a, uh, you know, one long cul-de-sac uh, to serve that entire, we need a secondary entrance. Uh, so this area right here is gated? I mean, not gated, yes. uh, yeah, would, completely fenced and probably gated. probably both gated. be gated, yes. I'm sorry? They would probably both be gated. Okay, so if they're both gated, how are you dealing with traffic coming down Fairfax? There's no um, turnout. Well, uh, as they're going to have to wait for the gate to open. Yes. I beg your pardon. They would have to wait for the gate to open. Yes. Well, the gates are normally set back sufficiently for several vehicles, so they can turn in there while the for gates several. open. Okay. Yeah. And also, Fairfax will uh, 
uh, a median will be constructed eventually. The project pays for at least half of that. That will prohibit a lot of turns. You know, there was some comment mentioned on people turning uh, out and going northbound. Uh, there will probably be only one entrance that would even permit that. And the project also widens Fairfax Road uh, to its ultimate width. Okay, and we'll, staff, we'll come back to that one. Mm -hmm. um, hold on, I, have, I had another one, another question. Get, pull, maybe if you pull back to the um, overall plan, I might ring a bell on what, what else I wanted to ask. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to come back to it. I know I had one more question, I don't remember, but I'll come back to it, thank you. Thank you. Any other commissioners like to ask any questions this time? Okay, I have a couple oh. of questions uh, for staff. Um, the applicant made a comment about uh, some study about the views into people's backyards from the uh, apartments. Has that been verified by staff? No. Okay. And uh, the traffic issue on Fairfax and the median, the applicant mentioned that, uh, that the uh, land use fees will pay for half of that median. Is there any plan to put a median on Fairfax? Uh, within the site plan review that was co accomplished, there are some good conditions of approval. Um, to note, number 15, it says the developer shall construct equivalent full width landscape median island in Fairfax Road along the development frontage. Uh, I would also note that um, when development occurs, that improvements occur. So again, there's another condition, condition four, five, and seven. Uh, four, number four says the developer shall dedicate additional road right away to the city of Bakersfield along Fairfax Road to full arterial width. Uh, number five, the developer shall construct additional roadway, including expanded intersections and or right turn lanes along Fairfax Road to full arterial street width. And then uh, Commissioner Lomas, to your point, uh, they have to show stacking at the gates, a minimum of 40 feet on arterial streets. And those are conditions of approval approval within the site plan. Thank you. Um, can we get back to this uh, 50 and older concept? The, you said that it was, uh, it was self, uh, self imposed. Uh, how do we uh, ensure that it remains that way into perpetuity? In essence, you would have to add the PCD, or excuse me, the PUD, plan unit development overlay onto the residential, and that would be a condition of approval. If they wanted to then uh, change that in the future, it would have to come back to your commission for consideration. Okay. I don't have any more questions. Any more? Any more? Oh, uh, Commissioner Lomas has a, I'm sorry, Commissioner Biddle, did you have a question? No, I'm sorry, I thought I just forgot you. Uh, uh, you didn't show up on this on here, so. I don't think mine is. Go ahead, Mr. Commissioner. Mike, on that with the P, uh, UD overlay, does that carry on to future owners of the property as well? A lot of the families have been here for generations, so if a new owner comes in 15 years from now and it's zoned R2, will they be held to the same um, standards as the owner and the, the developer now? Uh, that is correct, unless they came back to your commission and through city council for a zone change to either remove the PUD or Potentially, if they wanted more units, they could go for R3, more dense. Or if they want to demolish it and go R1, then they could come back and do a zone change to R1. Yeah, yeah Ms. Lomas. I remembered, and, and the questions to the applicant, I'm not sure who, who can answer it. Um, why don't you, I'll, I'll ask it from here. Um, I saw the grading map, but it's gibberish to me, I don't really understand it. So do you have anything that demonstrates the topography? What would this actually look like? The height relative to the street, to the neighbors, do you have anything to demonstrate that? Uh, Matt Fovilla. Um, 
I have a couple exhibits right here I can provide. Um, it may not. Can we help them with the overhead part to get that working? These were, you know, just for we our. Need, we need to call the geek squad in the back or what we need to do. <laughs> yes, our tech services are very helpful, and I'm sure they'll be right out. All right, I shouldn't malign the people that run my computer, I guess, so I, I have to apologize to them. The camera? Any papers in here? All right. You'll excuse us, we have some new technology in the council chamber, so we're all still getting used to it. So uh, be patient, please. As always, thank you, TS. These were just, these were just for our own internal use, but um, if you look at the uh, cross-section on the left side of the screen, it says existing privacy fence. And uh, then those are, and these are graphically correct. Uh, you can see the elevations on the left side. Those are real world elevations. And then you see the apartments that are proposed, proposed apartment buildings, and then a line of sight. Uh, again, these are elevations at 690 feet. Uh, a lot of the land to the east is you know, seven, 8,000 feet. So uh, as I indicated, uh, a view to Fairfax Road could be obstructed, but you can still see all the, uh, the view shed to the country to the east and the mountains. I'm also interested in what it, what because you're that's that's a the topography of that thing is is excessive and I I understand you're you're going to have to do some cut and fill so where yeah I'm not seeing it um, it's not going to give the east west north well that's south. just the solid line here shows the actual grade line and this is based on our preliminary grading. Even Excuse me, that solid line at the bottom right here, that's based on our preliminary grading plan that we okay. submitted to uh, the engineering. Uh, this is existing ground. Excuse me, the, uh, the dashed line is the, the existing ground. Those pads are actually lower. Um, so you're taking it down further? In places, yes, that, tr that terrain goes up and down, and we have to try to make that earthwork uh, balance. Okay, so when you're at the eastern part, of the eastern line of your property, that's a lot higher. That grade is pretty steep. So I see this is, you're doing a north-south rendering. I'm asking east-west what that would look like. Am I looking at this right, that this is a north-south yeah, view? Yes, you are. Okay. Right, so I'm asking for the east-west. If you don't have it, I, I mean, no. you don't. It, it's, I was just, if you have it, I would really like to see it. Uh, right now, the existing terrain. Right now, the existing terrain on that east-west section. The that's the existing privacy fence at the west side of the property. That natural ground dips down quite low, then comes back up, and then goes back down. Um, any building site pad, and then again, this is this is from a. Uh, a preliminary grading plan, uh, part of that, that isn't part of this application, but nevertheless, we did it. 
This shows the finished pad grade for any future single family home. You can see that that is a cut quite a bit below um, the natural ground. Again, again, that natural ground is the dashed line. So that we're would be the natural at, ground. We're looking at west east. So if you're going all the way to the east, that's where the grade really severely drops. But it's not rent. It's not shown here. You're showing where the housing is. There we go. Yeah. Here you can see Fairfax Road. That's the grade right yeah. there. Okay. That's the natural ground, right? The dashed line. The solid line is the uh, proposed uh, finished pad grades for the apartments. Again, this is just based on a preliminary plan that we submitted to demonstrate that this can work. Understood. It's not a final grading plan. Sure seems steeper than that. Okay, thank you very much. Well. Any further uh, commissioner questions? All right. Um, this is our uh, rebuttal period. <clears throat> Uh, is, there, uh, can, is there anyone who wishes to provide a rebuttal on this item? If so, please be, be, please be prepared to step to the podium. Each side will only have five minutes total. So make your comments succinctly without repeating the remarks of previous speakers to ensure that everyone wishing to provide rebuttal comments has a chance to do so. Uh, at this time, we'll start with the uh, uh, the group in favor of the project uh, can go first and then we'll let the uh, uh, people opposed to the project uh, have the last word, so. Matt Vovilla, um, mine will only take about a minute. Um, there, were, there were a lot of comments um, from the opposition about the wall footing and the wall being tagged, possible people climbing on the walls. Uh, that wall is accessible today. Uh, there will be a fence around uh, the development to keep anybody from the development accessing the wall. There was also some uh, structural engineering concerns on the on the wall. Um, uh, all I can say is that uh, you know responsible engineering will not compromise the integrity of that wall. Uh, the danger in 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 uh, a wall like that would be removing of a lot of materials in front of that wall, which isn't part of uh, our our plan in that area. Um, we're quite confident that would be, you know, thoroughly reviewed. Uh, regarding traffic, again, Fairfax will be wide into full arterial width. The median will be constructed. There's only one entrance that would be uh, complete uh, full access, unlike the entrances to the north, which are full access, by the way. But uh, uh, except for one, these would all be right in, right out only. So, anyways, that's... Uh, that's, um, you know, my opponent of the rebuttal. Uh, I'll yield the floor to Michael. Again, Michael Danens. Um, I was going to suggest, um, in light of what uh, Mr. Johnson said, that the applicant, we've discussed the situation, and we would not be opposed to um, a recommendation to change the rezoning from a C2 PCD to a C1 PCD uh, to restrict some of the uses that it, um, the C2 zone would otherwise allow. The, the project as designed would, would support a C1 zone, which is a little bit more of a neighborhood commercial. Keep in mind, it's a little bit over three acres in size. And I think with the uh, plan that's approved and part of the application with the drive-through restaurant, that that would preserve that nature of the design. The other thing I wanted to point out too is that the um, the fast food restaurant a lot of times, you know, we, we don't have a tenant for that yet, but it's designed to support more of a local type operation as opposed to maybe a national one because of the, the, the national chains usually like to be on arterial streets or in, a, in an area that's probably a lot larger commercial size development. So something like this would be a little bit more uh, local or a coffee shop or something that's a little bit less uh, intense as some of your national fast food chains. So I think that kind of fits into the neighborhood scale of the development. Um, with respect to the other 
issues, I think that sometimes development would give us an opportunity to develop some of the things that the area is missing, the sidewalks, to provide a little bit more walkability. There's a connection of a sidewalk between the uh, multifamily component and the commercial component, so there's a connectivity between that. Uh, when that intersection gets fully expanded as a result of this and the conditions of approval that are placed on the project, then I think the overall neighborhood and the and the and some of the issues that are currently there would kind of get resolved in terms of wider streets, more landscaping along the sidewalks, the sidewalks themselves, crosswalks, signals expanded, things like that. So sometimes those would kind of help alleviate some of the dangerous conditions with respect to Fairfax. And I also want to just emphasize again that the main entrance to the to the apartment project is off of that local private street that's going to provide access to the single family lots to the west. So um, that's the area where I think the majority of the traffic is going to be coming down Fairfax, and it's going to be a, a wide, or not a wide, but a, 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 the width of a local street, which is going to be able to accommodate the traffic in that particular area. So that's the main entrance, so most of the traffic will be funneling there. Thank you. And again, we would just like to say that we uh, appreciate staff's work on this and the efforts that they put in towards getting us to a project that I think is going to be a benefit to the community. And again, we would support their recommendation with the caveat that we would accept a C1 PCD zone for the commercial area. Thank you. Simran Deol. And um, there was an uh, issue raised about homeless uh, people and uh, the security. So I'm gonna let you know that- You have about uh, 30 seconds, so go we, ahead. We, we're gonna have a security company and uh, both the communities are gonna be the gated communities. Thank you. All right. Well, st can we reset that clock, please? And uh, this will be time for the opposition to uh, provide rebuttal. You'll have a total of five minutes, so please keep your comments succinct and try not to repeat the comments of previous speakers. And uh, anybody who wants to come and speak, just come up and start after the last person, so thank you. Yeah, it'd be better if you lined up so that we could be get everybody in, so. Thank you. Shane Brandon, um, in regards to traffic coming off of Fairfax, you know, we have uh, a gated community right there at the summit. We have 31 homes, and we often have times where the traffic is backed up from the gate to Fairfax with 31 homes. So I can only imagine the issues that's going to be with uh, 64 homes or apartments with multiple people having cars you're going to have issues with traffic coming in and out of there. Um, regards to the wall, um, with the grading plan, I, I, I see that as an issue. Uh, I'd like to see more uh, engineering or what, see what the engineering is done for that part of it. Um, and I definitely would like to make sure that this stays uh, an R1 as planned. Thank you. Kurt Wingate, K-U-R-T, W-I-N-G-A-T-E. Um, surprised at only one entrance allowing northbound traffic on Fairfax. Uh, Freeway 178 is where probably 80% of these people want to go. They're gonna be forced southbound on Fairfax and probably to do um, some kind of crazy U-turn at College Avenue and then head back up north or the other option will be they will head west on College Avenue, right on Flint Ridge, left on Country Club. They'll cut through Country Club Drive to Wingfoot and exit out off of Pico onto Oswell. That's a bad plan for the neighborhood. There's got to be some other way to get northbound on Fairfax. Uh, as far as the restricted age, one person age 50 per unit, I don't know how that is ever figured out or um, verified. Um, I am in favor of keeping this all R1, but I would also recommend 55 and over only in this area. Thank you very much. Again, Brian Sorcy. 
On the issue of outreach to the neighborhood, um, I do, I'm not sure how serious they would really be if you're going to go through a pretty substantial zone change. I think you'd reach out to uh, the people in the neighborhood that did not happen at any level. I also would have to question how serious they were about making the original zoned area worked when nobody can even tell what how many potential R1 units or lots um, would have been on the, uh, the property. Um, also, I think to leave the dangling issue of that somehow that this project will reduce greenhouse gases and all those things associated with it, I don't think you can just leave that hanging without uh, some solid clarification of which we've heard none. The other thing that I would question is if you're going to do substantial cut and infill for R2 and commercial, why not do cut and infill for R1 lots? It's, it's probably less work. Gail Maloof, um, I just heard one of the owners say that they were going to provide security. Well, that's security for their property, not for ours. We're, we're, we're concerned about the whole area, not just their property. And if they are going to be widening Fairfax, if it's widened as wide as it is from the summit north, they would be taking property or it would go down and take away from that property so are they going to have to redesign that property in order to accommodate fairfax to be widened because it's going to have to be widened a lot i'm not i didn't measure traffic's too bad going down there but right now there is no side street i mean it's two lanes and that's it and dirt so if you're going to widen it as wide as from the summit north Property's going to have to be taken. It's going to be their property. So are they going to have to redesign this in order to accommodate what they have already said that they are going to do? There is an entrance coming into Fairfax. It shows it on this map going into this uh, R2 zoned area. And there are two others going into the commercial. So again, traffic goes down that hill. You have 30 rapidly. seconds left, so I anybody else wants to speak, be quick, please. It goes down there rapidly, and so it is a danger. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to provide rebuttal comments? All right. <clears throat> At this time, I will now close the public hearing on this item and return it to the commission for comment and action. Uh, okay, uh, any commissioners wish to uh, comment, uh, provide any statements? <laughs> I can't really go. Mr. Kidder? Um, yeah, oh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. Why don't you give us a minute? I think the commissioners are trying to get their thoughts together before they uh, ask, before they uh, make any comment. So, uh, you guys want to take a, a little five minute break or something? Or what? Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and adjourn for, call it 10 minutes, and we'll reconvene here. All right. Thank you. All right. So let's, uh, for the, manage our time here uh, we're going to be back on the record to continue our uh, meeting uh, do I need to say anything specific to do that can we just say ready set go okay yes. thank you all right so uh, we're uh, we left off with uh, commissioner comments I think that uh, all the commissioners have had an opportunity to uh, uh, get their thoughts together so uh, our first speaker will be uh, commissioner Bashatash please Thank you. I just had a, a few thoughts as I listened to comments from both sides that uh, I started to kind of meditate on a little bit and ponder. And it was, it, there was a gentleman who spoke in, in opposed to it and it, it, it began to take light in my mind as I've driven through this community multiple times and you think about all of these little hidden areas and pockets in Bakersfield where people start to set up camps and make these little cities and it just becomes something that you can't, I, I watch, I mean, there's a drive I take to work and I watch a 
this little mini town get demolished like every two weeks by the city. They come into this tractor, they pull all this junk down, and it's just repeat, 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 repeat. And I, you know, I listened to him and I heard about him. You bring in these commercial different types of businesses and then they, people come and they flock to them and they find these little pockets where they can live and sustain themselves and then they come out during the daytime to kind of conduct their business and do what they do. And, and, uh, and I, I get that because it's, it's, uh, uh, it's something tangible. We see that often. Um, but there's this, I, I lived in Riverside for a period of my life and there was this area very similar and it was just a really weird um, shaped uh, piece of property and it was vacant for a long time and it was up and down and there was boulders all over it. And I remember a guy had come in and said that he wanted to build this gated community with these townhomes and, and, then, and he wanted to build a few houses above it. And, and, uh, and that's what he did. And it was a very two fast intersections and, and a lot of people were concerned about that. And I remember watching it come together and, and seeing it in its final stage and even pulling in a few times. And it, 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 it was beautiful. Like they really did a good job with it. And I kept thinking over this project and going back to that project and looking between the two and thinking about how similar they are in the, the, this town and that town and how they designed it in the same type of concept. And um, it, it, it built up that area and that city really well. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit of a conflict within and thinking about the different areas and, and you living in that area and being a resident and, and uh, living with whatever the final outcome is. So um, that's just, uh, those are my thoughts. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Cater. Thanks. Yeah. Um, I just appreciate uh, everyone that came out to, to speak, both in support and opposition. I think uh, it's been a few meetings since we've had, you know, a large community engagement, and I think it's one of my favorite aspects of commission is the ability to come out and speak about the future of our community together. So thank you all for attending. Um, I um, I think this this reminds me of a lot of sites in Bakersfield where we our general planning process has left a little gaps where we've added water towers, we've added storage tanks, we've added sumps, and the parcels that remain are neither here nor there. I think. Um, we have flexibility in our zoning, whether it's a PUD, whether it's a PCD, whether it's the zone change process, that acknowledges that some of these sites have been parceled and piecemealed and maybe their zoned use in a general plan that happened many, many years ago aren't the, um, aren't the best and highest use for the site. And so um, these meetings where we talk about zone changes are some of my favorite. Um, I will say, however, I'm also a strong believer that a zone change process is, is an opportunity for us as a community to say, how will this project benefit the community? It's, it's, a, it's a claim being made by the project applicant that we are building a better Bakersfield. And maybe what we talked about in a room when we laid a map out and we zoned miles and miles of land was not specific enough for this corner, for this intersection. And so I, um, I appreciate the level of detail the applicant presented tonight because I think it's really helpful to see the project. Um, I appreciate um, the, uh, the grading plan. Uh, Commissioner Lomas, I would be happy to uh, talk the points with you afterwards because I thought it was very helpful to see. Um, I think we get a little bit used to the uh, flatlands of Southwest and Northwest Bakersfield and so it's, it's fun to see a project that really does, where topography really does protect a view of a single family home next to a two story apartment. And so I um, appreciated that. I, to me, I think, and this is just the rambling before I say, and I don't think I'm quite ready to make a motion because I'm still trying to process it through. Uh, I think that the, the compelling case made for an R2 zone and more of a planned unit development that looks at this hilly site with limited access as a cohesive unit and not as a series of individual parcels, to me, that makes a lot of sense. Where the applicant starts to lose me is I think the, um, so going back to my intersection question, call the ingress, so the, the, the southernmost, the south property line is only 217 feet to the center of Fairfax. So the access from college to the gas station is very much less than 200 feet. It's probably more in the realm of 75 to 80, I would say. 
And um, when I think of land uses that tend to back up, that tend to queue, somebody forgetting to take out their credit card or forgetting you know, their order of fries can really cause a traffic jam. I, I think of drive throughs and I think of gas stations, and I think this proposal um, puts both in a very, very close proximity to a very high impact intersection that also deals with topography for people coming downhill at an accelerated rate. I think this applicant, I think the, the uh, what was described, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, as a clinic or kind of a community serving uh, clinic space, I might have heard that wrong. Um, I think that to me seems like an interesting integration of some neighborhood serving space, but I, I, to where it really loses me is the amount of what I see as disorganized vehicular use that's being kind of put at this very tip of the project that even putting kind of anything there is gonna be what I would consider not an ideal proximity to a collector street meeting an arterial. So that's kind of where I'm at. I don't know, uh, I, I'm very interested in uh, my fellow commissioners' uh, comments, so I will defer to the next speaker. Thank you, Commissioner Cater. Uh, Commissioner Bowers. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you to the applicant and to the residents for your commitment and unwavering devotion to your community, which happens to be my community. I live right over in the country club, and so I don't know if you've come down Fairfax there recently. It's a, it's a tough little wiggle room in there. And, you know, when you look at the commercial side, I think for me I have still a lot of questions, and to echo uh, my colleague here on the board, uh, Mr. Cater, uh, with respect to the traffic piece, uh, it's still, I don't know about you guys, and, and I'm just talking here, but it's still arduous for me to find out how we're going to, I mean, we're gonna put a, you know, an island in the middle. Um, so with respect to the traffic piece, I don't know if I'm convinced because there is a lot of backup there. And uh, so for some of the residents who, who live there, and I live up the street, uh, it's a lot of traffic uh, and it can get congested. And I've actually been at that intersection and actually saw an accident. But with respect to the housing portion, and I look at our seniors and I look at um, how important it is to try to find housing in Kern County, and, I, and we, we see how pronounced homelessness is in our community. Um, that particular piece, if we can ensure that, hey, look, this is gonna be 55 and older. Um, I'm willing to entertain that piece, not, not so much with the commercial side, but um, to Mr. To Mr. Uh, Wingate, uh, when he said, hey, uh, I, I, he moved over and said, look, I, I would consider 55 and older. And so um, I have seen this particular parcel of property has been an eyesore. Uh, even when I went to Compton Junior High and used to you know, take the route and go by there, uh, it's still undeveloped and I would love to see something happen there. Um, so for me, I'm just talking, I really love the aspect of bringing senior housing. If, if, they, if it's gonna be gated, uh, I really like that. If it's gonna be uh, high-end senior housing, I'm really in favor of that. Um, but I'm just conflicted in my mind with respect, how do we fix the traffic piece? Um, if we bring in a fast strip or whatever, uh, there's a fast strip there, but if we bring in a gas station and if we bring in uh, some type of fast food, uh, you could probably have a cluster, and I don't know if you guys have been on Rosedale. This was not the planning commission here, but but there are some restaurants uh, right off Rosedale, and you can see the traffic backed up into um, the actual uh, Rosedale Highway. And so uh, would hate to see that, and if there's any way that we can prevent that. Um, so that's not a motion, just me talking out loud. But I love the housing piece, but I'm just, I don't have the clarification with respect to the commercial traffic piece. I don't, I don't understand that as, 
how that's going to work. Thank you, Commissioner Bowers. Commissioner Biddle. All right. Well, first off, congratulations, Charmpreet. I'm glad to see that we're going to have, you know, families that are carrying on the medical industry here in town, and I know that you're going to do good things for our community. One of the issues that I saw with this project was a lack of communication with the uh, residents in the area and um, a lot of the, 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 the people. So I think that's something we need to look to, into in the future is maybe doing more of the, the community outreach to find out what they want in that area. And to kind of explain what your, your plan is too, I think there was lack of communication when it came down to what type of residency this was going to be. You know, 55 and older, 62 and older, there's a lot of benefits to having those kind of community, um, those in your community. And I think that that's something that Bakersfield's really reaching for right now. I believe our occupancy or our um, availability for rental properties right now is less than 1% in Bakersfield. So there definitely is a need for discrete, um, discrete densification. So more, you know, areas like this. So I like the project. I just don't know if this is necessarily the right area for it. Convenience stores in a residential area usually do draw crime. We see it all over town, no matter where you're at. So that that is a little bit hard to convince the community that they do need that commercial area in their beautiful their beautiful um, community. But I do think we need to look into allowing new diverse ways of having housing in our area. And that, that doesn't mean to say not in my backyard, because an apartment complex does not necessarily mean any kind of crime. It's what you do for your community and the involvement you have in your community. So showing up like this, seeing a large crowd at a, at a planning commission shows that you care about what goes into your community and who's there and how their life is affected as well. So this might not be the right area for this project, but it definitely is nice for Bakersfield. Thank you, Commissioner Biddle. Uh, Commissioner Lomas. All right, where do we start? We have a very strange piece of property, and I, I, really, I uh, really like how you, Commissioner Cater, described it. Um, I agree with the neighborhood when you say I should trust in the integrity of the zoning. I, I agree with you. But things get chopped up and things get disjointed and then you have a mess. And that's what we're dealing with right here. With other land use decisions that were made created this mess right here. So it's our job to say what's the highest and best use for this land. But you're the neighbors, so we hear you. That's what we're here for, is to listen to you. We want to make it a better place for you. So that's, that's what we're doing. So bear with us as we try to figure it out. Um, because you, I'm sure you want it developed because with that development, you're going to get the sidewalks and the improved streets and your median. Your median doesn't come until development comes. The city of Bakersfield doesn't have money to come in and make your streets pretty. Developers do that. That's how they're paid for. So that's how that area is going to be improved. So, all right, so now what do we do? Um, I uh, don't like commercial at all. I don't like the gas station. I don't like the uh, fast food because of the traffic. You can't stack this stuff right. As you said, Rosed oh, Rosedale Highway is huge and you got, you got plenty of room over there. And this is tiny. This is not e just a little bit over three acres. I don't see how you can put fast food and a gas station on three acres. So, um, I have a suggestion. I wish that the developer had met with the neighborhood. I really do. You would have saved a lot of hassle. You might have got some of these things worked out. They wouldn't be so upset. Um, they would, they, they, you could have heard them before we're here in front of everybody. If 
I'm supposed to sit here and listen to all of you, and then with our experience, we're supposed to say, okay, well, we think this is highest and best use. So I think highest and best use for this property is, I like the senior housing component, but it needs to be true senior housing. It needs to be 55 and over, all residents. Typically, in those type of communities, they have uh, visitors, like you can have your grandkids come, but they can only stay for two weeks that type of thing. So it needs to be true senior. Um, I would suggest a R2 PUD with commercial office to deal with the doctor's office. And that's not gonna generate a whole bunch of traffic that the fast food and the, um, thank you. So I would support something like that. Otherwise, then I would revert back to say, hey, just develop it as R1, because that's what you bought. So that's my two cents. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Lomas. Uh, that, uh, I'd like to share a few comments before we uh, ask for any motions. Um, oh, I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I wanted to comment, I think Ms. Lomas hit it on the head as far as the sidewalks and the, the median in the street. That hasn't happened until uh, we have development. So we, we need to probably develop this parcel. Uh, I'll share a little bit about this parcel because I looked at this parcel, I don't know, 15 years ago or so uh, to see if that was something that, uh, that we wanted to do at that time. and. This kind of goes to support the applicant's comment about uh, whether this works uh, as R1. And uh, that was what we determined at that time. It was that it didn't make any sense as R1 uh, because of all the work that needs to be done in order to build, a, build that out. You wind up with R1 lots that aren't, that are too expensive to uh, really uh, make work. So uh, in that sense, I, I'm supportive of the uh, R2 uh, zoning for the other lots. Uh, however, um, I, ha I also have that, I, I didn't like that 50 year old, one of the people, I, I'm not exactly sure how you make that work. Uh, I don't think that you can do that under, under uh, the current law anyway. Um, I, I think you can have 55 and over communities that are designated that way. Uh, uh, but I, I'd like to see some, some surety of that on that matter. Uh, there is absolutely nothing about the commercial parcel I like, to be frank with you. Uh, I don't like the orientation of the gas station. I don't like the, orient the, the orientation in terms of uh, that gas island sitting right there on the corner. Uh, we, we generally try to, uh, you know, block that view uh, with some building of some kind. Uh, I don't like the fast food restaurant because uh, of the traffic impact there. So uh, personally, there's nothing about uh, the, ga the commercial part I like. Uh, I wanted to make a comment about the homeless situation over there. Uh, we hear you on the homeless. I encourage you, if you haven't already, downloaded the City of Bakersfield app. Uh, there is an opportunity there to report these kind of things. Code enforcement is very active in responding to those. Uh, they work in conjunction with uh, flood ministries and other agencies. And uh, the more that, from my perspective, the more that we offer services to these people, uh, those that will accept those services will take those and we'll be able to get those people off the street. Those people that are not willing to accept that will uh, 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 not appreciate us approaching them every, uh, very frequently and they'll go somewhere else. And so uh, I encourage you to download that City of Bakersfield app. I have used it myself and, and, and it works. Um, I think I've said all I really need to say. So Ms. Lomas, did you have another comment? Yes, thank you. 
Um, so my suggestion would be to um, continue for two weeks to give the applicant a chance to, to address what they've heard here tonight and also give them the opportunity to, to set up a meeting with the neighbors. That would be my suggestion. Is that a motion? Did it sound like one? Is that a motion that we can uh, we can make work? Yes, you can. All right. That uh, would be they, my motion. Are there any other motions? Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Done so talking yet? I would, <laughs> with what they've heard tonight, with and I didn't hear anybody weigh in, and I would I wouldn't mind hearing that commercial office R two P U D addressing the fifty five and older for all residents and that's it that's my motion anybody want to make a second is there a, well are there any other motions that we can consider no mr Cater. Mr. Cater. it's a clarification for staff are we able to if the applicant applied for a c2 are we able to grant a co uh, you, you could grant a CO, yes. The reason I did not put that up as an option is because that does not fulfill the proposed development. Yeah, of the gas. Uh, those, that yeah, development's yeah. not allowed in the CO. I would caution on, if we come back in two weeks, I would caution on making a motion for CO. I would rather just see it disapproved, denied, rather than something that can't be built to the applicant's standard. Well, and we'll have two weeks to figure it all out so they they've, they've heard the they know what they want and what they need to do and they can talk to you guys and see where and, we're and I would no I'm sorry to interrupt but I would note yes two weeks from tonight is another Planning Commission meeting our staff report is due next Friday so there's really we can we can provide a memo like we did with transferring comments but uh, there's very short time for the for the public and applicant to get together so I would hope that uh, everybody is receptive to that, acknowledging the short timeline, um, and they can work something out. I would also, while I have the mic, if I may, Ms. Etchison uh, commented on um, medical marijuana dispensaries. I would just like to note that is a prohibited use within the city at this time, uh, and there's no interest to, to revisit that. Uh, the county does make <clears throat> certain arrangements for that, uh, but it is prohibited within the city. I would probably say that if uh, if Ms. Lomas's motion is uh, voted on and passed, I understand that short time period, uh, but the uh, the applicant has the option to uh, extend this out to our next uh, uh, next meeting on on these kind of issues, which is September, uh, which may be more desirable to him than uh, some other uh, rushing something through. So, so. I mean, you could ask the applicant if they'd rather refer it back uh, rather than continue for two weeks, but a continuance is not um, not a bad idea to see what can be resolved. Uh, then in two weeks, uh, I think we'll, everybody will know where we stand. Uh, it appears that the way I see things going, um, that, that there's a risk of denial, at least on a portion of this site, and that's something for the applicant to consider. Mr. Kader, do you have another comment? Or did I, am I slow on clearing this screen here? I'll say the latter. Uh, go. All right. So, uh, do we have a we have a motion? Do we have a second on that motion? I'll make a second. As as a motion by uh, Commissioner Lomas and a second by Commissioner Powers. Uh, before we vote, do you want to re read uh, what? What there's, there's anything to, anything to read? We just no appeal at this point. So there's no need to read an appeal because you're continuing it for two weeks. Okay. Um, and. I would be remiss if I did not recognize Steve Esselman, principal planner for this project. Uh, a lot of members of the public have sent emails to him. We appreciate that. But if I get Steve just to stand up, I appreciate all your help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. Hello, Steve. All right, so uh, Madam Clerk, may we please have a vote, please? Motion approved with Commissioner Wade absent.
All right. Thank you very much. I think that gives everybody a chance to have some more dialogue about this project, and maybe uh, there will be a, uh, some meeting of the minds, hopefully. Uh, so we wish you both luck on that. Uh, let me see here. I got to find my place on the agenda. I think. Matt Clerk, next item, please. Communications. Uh, Director Johnson, do you have any communications? Planning Commission meeting in two weeks. <laughs> Sounds like it's more work for you than us. <laughs> so, we gotta read it. Yeah, we got to read it all again. So, uh, uh, Madam Clerk, next item, please. Commissioner comments. Are there any commissioners who would like to comment at this point? Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to thank Paul and uh, his phenomenal team for the exceptional work that they uh, have been able to provide and give. Uh, uh, they've been accessible. And, and Paul, I really appreciate all your help and your team. Thank you for answering a lot of my questions. Yeah, I think everybody agrees with that comment. Thank you for saying it, Mr. Barnes. Any other commissioner comments? All right, next item, please. Adjournment. Adjournment. Uh, that's our favorite one. The meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.